Welcome all. Today we will take up the shear force and bending moment diagrams particular to cantilever beams. The cantilever beams are those which have one end as a fixed end and the other end as a free end. So first of all let us see what the shear force and bending moment are and uh, what are their associated sign convention. So uh, the shear force as we define it is algebraic sum of all the vertical forces acting to the left or right of the cut section along the span of the beam. So it is very important to see that is first of all it is an algebraic sum of all the vertical forces. Second thing these vertical forces must be taken on one side of the section whether it is left side or right side. Then if you go with the sign convention the sign convention for shear force is let us say this is a cutting section plane and uh, it will be considered positive when the force is upward to the left of the section and it is considered to be the positive when it is downward to the right of the section. So for force we consider this as sign convention. Further the bending moment. The bending moment is it is the sum of the algebraic sum of the moments of the forces to the left or right of the section taken about that section, taken about our uh, section considered. So therefore it is also very important to see uh, the two things in the definition of bending moment. First of all it is a algebraic sum. The second thing it is either to the left or to the right of the section. Right. So uh, here also we have the associated sign convention which follows in terms of ho hogging moment and sagging moment and we consider that for bending moment the sagging moment is positive. We can also define in terms of the section plane. So let us say if this is my section plane sagging moment is this. So that to the left of the section the clockwise moment is positive and to the left right of the section anti-clockwise moment is positive. So you can remember it either uh, in the way of sagging and hogging that sagging moment is positive or uh, to the left of the section clockwise moment of the positive and to the right of the section anti-clockwise moment is positive. So we will stick to these uh, sign conventions. You may follow uh, other sign conventions as well exactly opposite to these many textbooks refer to the different sign conventions so but um, for for an individual it is it is always recommended that you follow a, a unique sign convention so we will continue with these sign conventions for shear forces and bending moments so let us take the first case of cantilever beam when it is subjected to a point load or a concentrated load at the free end so first of this example is when when this is our point a which is fixed end this is point B which is free end. So since between A and B the loading does not change in between A to B the loading does not change the, the geometric conditions does not change the beam remains same. So our section we can take throughout the beam as one. So if, if there is a loading change in between the beams we have to take uh, different sections but for a uh, cantilever beam between A to B there is no other force the geometry is also uniform so we can stick to a single section so therefore we take a section XX at a distance X from the free end okay it means we are taking B as a reference point and we are taking the section from this side so now when we take the section from this side so uh, let us let us say we we see this point section point so my shear force expression at this point will be to the right of the section downward and I know the assumption that if it is a force to the right of the section downward force is considered positive and anti-clockwise moment is considered positive. These are my sign convention which I will follow. Okay, So shear force will be downward so it is shear force at any section xx is equal to w because it is plus w because it is right of the section and it is downward. Same way with the bending moment expression since it is this section is at a distance of x units so the bending moment will be force times perpendicular distance that is W 
times x so w times x it will give me a moment in clockwise direction so therefore it must be negative according to the given according to the considered sign convention so bending moment at any section xx is equal to minus w of x right so this is how we get the expression for shear force and bending moment within a region of a to b within a span of a to b now the next task is to draw them to draw the diagram for shear force now since shear force is constant between a to b we can see that this is my reference line this is my reference line okay so at point b or at point a the shear force will remain same so the only thing is i will draw a rectangle so we can show it that it is positive side indicating that it is uh, or or it is also clear because it is uh, from the upper side of the reference line so this will be the shear force diagram for a uh, cantilever beam uh, subjected to a concentrated load at the free end now how we draw bending moment diagram so while drawing the bending moment diagram this x is varying from this x is varying from 0 to l 0 to l that means point b is corresponding to x is equal to 0 and the point a is corresponding to x is equal to l that means the bending moment at point b is 0 and the bending moment at point a is w times l what will happen between a to b a to b it will following a path of expression wx since it is a linear equation linear in x so it is equation of a straight line you can simply join the point at 0 and the point at a with a straight line okay so you can see that it is it is 0 at point b and it is w times l in the negative at point a and you are joining this with the help of a straight line why straight line because the expression is w times x it is an equation of a straight line right so we can observe from here that the shear force is constant throughout the beam throughout the length of the beam but bending moment is increasing from the b from the uh, free end and is maximum at the fixed end okay so it follows a linear path this is also a reason there is also a reason that uh, the bending moment is since the bending moment is maximum at the fixed end therefore the cantilevers will always have a tendency to break from the fixed end okay so this is how we will we will obtain the shear force and bending moment diagram for a concentrated load at uh, at the free end now you can you can argue on one point that i have taken a reference at point b okay that my x is ranging from 0 to l but my reference point is b i could have taken the reference point at a as well okay i want to take the reference point from a that means i must calculate the reactions as well as the moment because a fixed end will have these two reactions uh, actually you can say three reactions but third reaction will be zero since uh, there is no external horizontal load so i am just omitting the horizontal reaction so in any case there will be two unknowns one is fixing and moment one is fixing and reaction vertical reaction so if we take up the reference at point a we need to evaluate this as a priori there is no still there is no issue you can take up the reference a but we need to evaluate these these reactions first in order to in order to take the reference point at a so generally in cantilever applications it becomes convenient it becomes convenient that uh, you always choose free end as a reference point and you can also cross check whether you are right or not because whatever the value of shear force you get at point a okay please please listen it very carefully whatever the shear force you get at a 
that must be equal to the reaction at A. Okay, vertical reaction. And whatever the moment you get at A, that must be equal to the fixing end moment at A. Okay, so you can use these concepts for ensuring that your shear force calculations and bending moment calculations are actually precise. Okay, so if, if this is clear to you, we can, we can move forward with another example where we take up cantilever beam with a uniformly distributed load. So in, in this particular example, we take a uh, same cantilever beam of length L as we have taken in the previous case, but only thing we have taken a uniformly distributed load now instead of a point load. So again, while calculating the shear force, we take up this section. Okay. So my section is, let us say this again, uh, first of all, my reference plane is the free end and I am taking X in this direction. Okay, so what will be the total amount of load if W is the small W is the intensity of the load that is W per unit of length. So this, this total load will become small W times X. Okay, because W is the intensity and uh, X is the distance. So W times X will be the shear force. So shear force in between section XX will be equal to W into X times WX times 2. So but if I take the moment and this uh, and this shear force will remain same throughout the section because, because uh, there is no change in loading across the section. The loading is uniform. So again here also you will take only one section XX. So SF is equal to W times X. Now if I check take the moment, moment is force into perpendicular distance. So I know the force to the right of this section is W times X. And since it is a uniformly distributed force, I can assume that this force is acting through the centroid. So if this distance is X, so this must be equal to X by 2. Okay, so if the section is lying at a distance x from the free end, therefore the point of action of resultant force due to UDL will act at a distance x by 2. So therefore I will take the force as Wx and perpendicular distance as x by 2, making my boom bending moment expression as Wx square by 2. and the direction of the moment will be like this. So since it is a clockwise direction to the right of the section, so it will be negative. So please take care of this negative sign that why, why we have obtained this. So now we see this, the shear force follows a linear path. This is the equation of a straight line and bending moment expression, it follows a parabolic path since it is a second 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 uh, quadratic equation wx square by 2 right so it follows a parabolic law so let us see how we will draw this so now x is ranging from 0 to l where x is equal to 0 corresponding to the free end and x is equal to l correspond to the fixed end so so uh, we already obtained this shear force and bending moment expressions so where x is ranging from 0 to L at x is equal to 0 the shear force is 0 so if I want to draw the shear force so if this is my reference line at point A at point A x is equal to L so this will be equal to W times L okay so we, we can take this W times L at point B x is 0 so shear force is 0 so we can see that we obtained the shear force at the free end and at the point at fixed end. Now in order to join them, because this is an equation of a straight line, we can join them with the help of a straight line like this. So this will be my shear force diagram. I can represent it with the help of a plus sign and we can, we can do hashing here to just to indicate that this is a zone of the shear force diagram. 
okay so now to move further we have to do the calculation we have already done the calculation for bending moment diagram and we know that it is going to be a it is going to be a parabolic curve because of the second degree so let us say that this is a reference line again what will be the moment at x is equal to l it will be w l square by 2 so w l square by 2 since it is on the negative side minus so i am drawing it uh, in in the downward direction of the reference line so this will be w l square by 2 substituting x is equal to l and when we substitute x is equal to 0 we get x is equal to 0 now in between fixed fixed point and free end we have the distribution as parabolic so therefore we should not draw a straight line and rather we should follow a parabolic path like like this make, making the bending moment zero at the free end and maximum at the fixed end okay therefore we can note that the bending moment is maximum at the fixed end and hence the cantilever beam has a tendency to break from the fixed end only if we are okay with this we can take up another problem so here the beam is again cantilever but instead of subjected to only one load it is being subjected to a uniformly distributed load of intensity small w per unit length and as well as a point load of intensity w units at free end okay it is desired that we evaluate shear force and bending moment diagram right let us see how we proceed further uh, again same way we are taking the reference point as a fixed free end and choosing a section plane at any distance x from the free end so if we look at the shear force calculations now the shear force will be the sum of the forces sum of all the forces as we define so sum of all the forces means so in shear force we have a contribution let us let us draw it is my x x plane and we take it separately so this will be the free body diagram of that point so that that means we have one force which is capital w and another force which is w x okay both are acting in downward direction of the section plane that means your shear force will be equal to capital w plus w x okay shear force expression for section x same way so capital w plus w x now for the bending moment you have you will have a bending moment due to capital w which will be equal to w times x also you will have bending moment due to this small w that is in uniformly distributed load and you will have w x square by 2 similar to the one which we have done early in earlier example and we take up a negative sign because the moment due to these applied forces will be in the clockwise direction and according to the assumption we have sagging moment is positive so once we take up these values we need to draw them on a on a um, shear force and bending moment diagrams again we can note that shear force follows a superposition of a constant value as well as a linear value so that means shear force follows the linear path and the bending moment follows the parabolic path since since it is of a degree 2 so uh, we are not going to draw the diagrams i hope that we can draw you can draw on your own so just take it this as an assignment so draw shear force and bending moment diagram on your own following the appropriate sign convention so i hope with this we can now draw the shear force and bending moment diagrams for the cantilever beams subjected to uniformly distributed as well as the concentrated load thank you very much